It hasn't rained in over a month. And what I'm showing you here is the level of the river. So if we look down here, right? It's really shallow. Just from another angle, you can see the river here in this forested, forested slice area. This is an ecological restoration zone. But if we, if we go down here, we can see how low the water level is. If we pop up over this building, the sun looks orange. That's from the forest fire smoke. That's not natural. Normally this is so bright it's hard to look at. If we pan out here, we can see those hills are supposed to be a dark green color and they're you know, light gray. That's because the sunlight is being obscured by particles from the forest fires in the lower Cascade foothills. So it has an otherworldly lighting vibe to it this morning. You see here I pan around like this. We can see this local pond. This is with no rain in over a month. Near the Rally Storage Complex, right here in Issaquah. And again, if we look off into the hills there, I mean, you can't even really see the Cascade Mountains, which is unusual, completely obscured by forest fire smoke. That's formula brewing over here right there. That's the closest brewery to my home. They're not open early. They don't open until later in the day. They have outdoor seating over here. Real popular on sunny days. That is Interstate 90 right there. here on this road. As I've noted before, this Segway Mini Pro from 2016 can't even go 15 miles per hour. That's what that speed limit means. It's around 20 something kilometers per hour. You can see that the trees here are getting a haircut. That's so that when trucks drive through here, they don't hit the trees. You can see the crew down there. They're using a pole mounted saw of some kind. Like that. And they're trimming, trimming the trees down. It's about 47 degrees outside. I'd call this glove temperature on anything that moves you at more than three miles per hour. It's one of those temperatures that it'll steal the heat out of your exposed hands or face. If I do this fast enough, it actually makes my eyes water. This is a local park off-leash area where people take their dogs. And you'll see an example because um, there's a dog place. Morning! 
there's a dog place over here. I'll show you. It's called River Dog. And they they store people's dogs here. They train people's dogs. If you have a dog, you should come check it out. It's a really cool spot. And what we have here is a beautiful field where there's a giant walking trail that runs through here. And it's very popular with dog owners. They bring their dogs down here. And there's a big area if you've got an active dog, like a Border Collie or an Australian Shepherd, you can let them run over here. It's nice. This is the River Dog business. We'll roll right up on it so you can take a close look at their sign. Pretty cool. It's a low traffic road over here near this marketing company. And I'm uh, doing it barefoot in Birkenstocks like that. You can see my toes turning white. It's because it's really early in the morning and it's cold. The sun hasn't had a chance to warm things up yet. It's called a roundabout. They're real popular in Europe. In France, they have some with five different roads. This is one that merges three roads. That road, that road over there, and this road right here. So it's an alternative to a light controlled intersection they have higher uh, traffic throughput in light traffic conditions. So roundabouts are optimized for um, suburban and some urban applications. Uh, they're less expensive but they than a light controlled intersection, but they take up more space. If we back up and zoom out here, you can see it requires a big piece of land, like an acre uh, of land to install the round roadway that's wide enough to accommodate commercial vehicles. But roundabouts are nifty. You can go round and round in circles on them. I'll demonstrate. So, I'll just point it at the middle of the roundabout like this and then go around and round. You see this nice signage here. It shows you what's within walkable distance inside that circle. There's a map here. We see SR 900 and I 90 crisscrossing. Gilman Boulevard, Northwest Mall Street, Northwest Maple Street, 18th Avenue Northwest, 19th Avenue Northwest see all the local businesses. That creek is called the Tibbetts Creek Greenway that I was shooting video footage earlier of. You see Newport Way down there at the bottom. At the very top we see Lake Sammamish State Park. That was featured in one of my recent videos. There's Arena Sports over there to the upper left corner. The Washington Fencing Academy and CrossFit of Issaquah are located in this business complex. There's the Hollywood Suites by Hilton, Hilton Garden Inn, Jack's Dog Drop, 
to the dough zone is a quack cafe toshi teriyaki garlic crush baskin and robin starbucks gemini fish market naan and curry mcdonald's burger king studio issaquah swim labs inspire academy pacific northwest golf academy gymnastics east the UW neighborhood clinic active body pilates top donut and the gas lamp bar and grill there's even the spring hill suites by marriott down there and the issaquah transit center which was featured in one of my recent videos we see the tibbetts valley park and the state park that's where i got into an accident on my way home in one of my recent videos nothing serious just soft tissue injury there's the Cougar Mountain Trailhead over there off of Newport Way. It shows you a bunch of hiking up there, up in, uh, in the hills up there. You can hike up. There's uh, thousands of miles of hiking in there, in that uh, small mountain range near here. You can have a look at this um, nature reserve place here. This is an ecological restoration zone that the developers were required to install as part of developing the anthology apartment complex. You can see it's actually filled in quite a bit uh, recently. These ecological restorations are a buffer what they do is they provide a water cycle and retreat for animals and plants. Nature space or natural area. You can see over here too, well, the same kind of idea. They even put sprinklers in to keep everything irrigated properly so it doesn't die from a lack of rain, which is a big problem. Lately, it hasn't rained in more than five weeks. Although in a couple days, it's supposed to rain and it's got a damp, chilly feeling in the air this morning. This is the elevated pedestrian walkway or trail walkway that I'm riding on here. If I turn around and zoom, you can see that ecological restoration zone and that bizarre sunscape with the forest fire filtered sunlight. And there's the elevated pedestrian walkway. Not to miss the forest through the trees, if you know what I mean. Sometimes it's the way that people are connected that makes the real difference, just like transistors and integrated circuits. The body itself is a system of systems. Life is actually pretty magical if you think about it. Morning. Morning. Are you vaping? Yeah. Um. This is the hyper overpriced apartment complex where I live with my mother and wife. We've been here for a couple years. It's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. They just, you know, $3,500 a month for a two bedroom apartment. It does have a garage, so I'm not complaining, but yeah, Issaquah is gentrified. I have a look though. It's got a nice big open space right here. The buildings are relatively new. I believe they were built in 2017, maybe finished in 2018. They're in pretty nice shape. They just cleaned the windows. Uh, office staff's real friendly, although the turnover rate's so extreme that I never know who I'm going to encounter as soon as I meet someone. It seems like they change right away. Nice paint job. They they pick designer colors for the buildings. Uh, you know, they're, they're beautiful. Three-story light wood construction. That's the Arena Sports building with its obnoxious daylight white LEDs there that are on during the daytime for no apparent reason since you can barely see them. That's an example of energy waste something I'm passionate against. At least they're downward facing so they don't throw a light at the sky which would produce light pollution. 
they're just my least favorite color obnoxious daylight white the pole you see with the crook in the top of it right there those are warm white colored or 3000 kelvin or 2700 kelvin similar to this fixture right here and you can see they're also led if i zoom in like this maybe you can see the led modules although against the sky the phone is having a hard time with that they're highly power efficient they have a long life leds are light emitting diodes they're usually arranged in series to produce the requisite voltage drop when i say voltage drop the forward working voltage of most leds is between 2.7 and 4.5 volts depending on the design so on a 277 volt commercial connection or a 120 volt ac domestic connection or 240 volt domestic connection they have to put the driver uh, such that it produces the correct amount of forward working voltage um, here's another example of this uh, type of lamp right here they have them all around the community if i zoom down you can see they're all along the street there too two more right there and there well, what it does is it converts AC to DC and then it passes the DC across the diode which emits light. That's why it's a light emitting diode. Sometimes they run the diode array directly on AC, but then it has a 60 hertz flicker, which is the refresh rate in cycles of the electrical grid nearby. Uh, North America is 60 hertz. In uh, Europe and the rest of the world, it's 50 hertz, so the flicker would be even more intense. So a lot of um, LED driver modules double or quadruple the refresh frequency. Though it's more common to use a transformer to drop the voltage and then rectify it to DC. That's a, a switching transformer. Or there's a couple of different ways to do it, either with an electromagnetic transformer and diodes um, or a class 2 switching power circuit. It's got a gratuitously large parking lot. All the spaces are pretty small. They wrote the word compact on the ground to denote the small size of the parking spaces. They have utility and mechanical closets mounted right here. This is always an abomination, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. People bomb this place with furniture, electronics. You can see... They just shove mattresses and they put trash in the recycling, recycling in the trash. They leave shit on the ground. They have to come multiple times a week to empty these dumpsters. The blue ones for recycling and it even explains with pictures for people that don't read English, but it also describes what goes there. And then the garbage has labeling too that tells people what goes in there. But the arrogant, uptight people that live here don't pay any attention to that, or at least it doesn't seem that most people do, because I frequently have to help sock the maintenance dude sort out the recycling facility. And that's only one of several dozen of these facilities in here. There's literally hundreds of households, uh, you know, spanning across all the buildings like this. Now, there is a significant number of people who do a good job sorting their trash and recycling, so. I'm not throwing everyone under the bus, but people who can recycle correctly and don't are lazy and they make the world less enjoyable.